doing? Go what's up? Hey, listen. Uh, at this point, I, I realize that Eli doesn't have a trade clause here, but I mean, he does point, have a no trade clause. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he and does. At yes. this point, I mean, at this point, I mean, hey, you could almost throw anybody in there right now. If he, if anybody throws a pick six, it is what it is. I mean, he's not playing that good. So what do we do here? You don't have any other answer, and the, the, I don't know that anybody wants his, you know, to deal with his contract. I don't know what the Giants are thinking about it right now. They have not explained it. They don't have anybody to play for him. They, uh, I, I, I should have, I sensed that you were from the beginning, and then I was made absolutely, completely, you know, accurate. You know, that uh, my sense was true that you were an idiot. Ben in Albany, what's up, Ben? Hi, Mike. Hey, Dallas fan here, but listening to all the New York fans talk about Eli. Mm -hmm. Past and present, okay, the past. Mm -hmm. He beat the best quarterback ever twice with no Hall of Famers on his team except for Strahan. Present. Two years ago, wasn't Beckham and Cruz dropping touchdown passes in the end zone in the Green Bay game? It's yeah, no Beckham question. Never won a never won a playoff game. This isn't I mean, about I but, but, but this, this isn't about sixteen years. Right, this isn't you know? about Beckham and him though. It, it really isn't now. It, I understand. You know, people are looking at it that way, and too many guys. Here's what I notice: so many of the ex players who are announcers want to make it a ch uh, that it either has to be Beckham's fault or Eli's fault. It's not true. It doesn't have to be either of their faults. It has to be whether that this whole thing works. And the Giants clearly now, the one thing that you would say if you're going to be truthful to the Giants is the Giants at some point, the year... In 2014, they came to a conclusion that they needed to shake things up. That's when they make the change at coordinator. At that point, they thought that they were still a quick fix away from taking another run of things. And their whole basis was to build a team that would allow Eli to run at another Super Bowl. Because they knew they had a player who, when he gets in the postseason, plays very well, lifts his game, has always been at his best in the big game, and so let's get in there and give him another chance to take another swing. Instead of saying, you know what, we really need to look at this and say, we have to rebuild our team a lot more dramatically than we think. They knew they had it. They pinpointed the offensive line, reached it, I remember going to camp with Reese two years ago and saying to him, do you feel you've adequately addressed what is clearly a huge offensive line issue? Absolutely. We feel completely confident. Well, of course, Reese's job. Now, this year, again, Gettleman, Shermer, the coaching staff, uh, we will go as far as the offensive line will take us. We've put skilled people around Eli Eli, we feel, can still throw the ball, which he clearly can. I mean, he threw the ball for 400 yards the other night. He can still get the ball down the field with anybody. He can still make very accurate passes. The problem is he has no mobility. They did not address the offensive line. Their offensive line is completely putrid. It does, it does nothing. And the biggest thing you saw the other night, and everyone wants to run away from it, is their left tackle, who they paid all that money to, was awful in the game. Absolutely awful. That is a huge problem. I mean, if you don't have the guy who you built there, you brought in as the cornerstone doing his job, how's the rest of the line going to work when you're changing it week to week? So that line has become such an incredible... And I'm not just blaming it on the line. I'm not saying that other guys haven't done other things wrong or that Eli hasn't made a bad pass or you know Beckham hasn't had a drop or this guy hasn't made a mistake or this guy on defense hasn't done this. What I'm saying is that's stuff that happens in every game. But they brought in a running back who has not had a chance to run the football. They put in a couple of, they designed a couple of plays for that game in the running game, and Atlanta stopped them cold. And Atlanta didn't any good on defense, and they stopped them cold. And that's because they're, they don't win at the point of attack. And I've been saying that about the Giants now for four years and it's never changed that they can't win at the point of attack and they can't 
and they've never been able to fix it. And now, now they've gotten to a point where they need to fix a lot of things. And now they're telling you, where are you building this whole team? Because you just took a corner and traded him, that you was, who was the number one pick. You just took a tackle who you paid a lot of money to as a free agent, who made all pro just a couple of years ago, first team all NFL, and you just dealt him for a number five. So you're cleaning house. The problem is on offense, if you're going to give away one of your skill people, that's going to change you, and nobody wants any of your linemen, so that's not even an issue. So on offense, the only question is, you're not Beckham's going nowhere with that contract. I don't think they want to trade or get rid of Shepard or Ingram. I wouldn't want to. If I can get them for the right money and keep them for the right money, I will, they're very productive. And Ingram can be very productive if you can keep him healthy. The only question would be Manning. He'd be the only question there. Barkley, we can always go in nowhere. Beckham with that contract is going nowhere. So, on, and nobody wants any of the linemen, so you know that. So, with that being the case, you're talking about one player, and that is, would Eli Manning be going anywhere? That would be the only question. On the offense, on the defense, we've already seen two guys go in two days. I could see somebody wanting Vernon. I could see somebody wanting one of the other corners. I could see somebody wanting three or four of their defensive players. Absolutely. I could see more of them going. It could absolutely happen. Uh, Effie in uh, Jersey, what's up? Mike, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, what's happening? Now, the, the, my, my thought process is this. Why do, how do, why do you think we got to this point now that the, that the media and the fans are willing to accept Benjamin Eli when just last year... McAdoo tried to do it, and the media ran him out of town. I think because, first of all, it was done very wrongly last year. Secondly, everyone knows now that the Giants are going to go through a re— it's not that they're, they're, they're accepting of it. They know now that the Giants are going to go through a rebuilding process, a complete one. The Giants now have faced the music. They know this is not a quick fix now. They don't. They just traded two of their cornerstones on defense. They're not in a quick fix mode now. They're in a complete fix mode now. So the Giants are going to have a young man in Beckham, still a young man. I mean, a, a fairly young man in Beckham, a very young man in Barkley, a couple of the skill position people who are still young, in Shepard and in Ingram, and they're going to go get themselves a young quarterback. And then they're going to try to rebuild their defense and, and especially their defensive front and their offensive line. The Giants won two Super Bowls because they had tough offensive linemen. I'm talking about the Manning Super Bowls. I'm not talking about the Parcells Super Bowls. I'm talking about the Coughlin Manning Super Bowls. They won those Super Bowls because they had a pass rush. They had some toughness on the offensive line, and they had a quarterback who played big in big games. That's why they won two Super Bowls. That's it. They had always had a pass rush. They could not have won either of those Super Bowls against the Pats without a pass rush. The Super Bowl MVP, as big as Eli was the first time, Tuck was as big and could have been Super Bowl MVP. That's how big he was in the game. Belichick went in the game. He always highlights a guy. He told his guy, we cannot let Tuck beat us or disrupt us. Tuck did. They never got him blocked the whole game. That's why they lost. Eli had to make plays, and he had a very, in both games, Eli had terrific fourth quarters and made plays, which is what he's always done in the postseason. Eli's thrown, had very few mistakes in postseason games. He's had really come up big, whether it's the great play to Tyree, the big pass to Manningham, the play against the zero blitz for the winning touchdown, uh, all different plays at different times in, in the cold weather against Favre, against Rodgers in Green Bay, in San Francisco. So, But the point is, they always had a pass rush. And once they had a very classy wide receiver who came up very big, and his name wasn't Beckham. His name was Plaxico Burris, who they singled 
for some unknown reason, and he caught 13 passes in Green Bay. Sonny and Malvern, what's up, Sonny? Hey, Mike, how are you? What's uh, happening? As far as the defense is concerned, I, w- I would trade everybody except Collins. Uh, but I like what they're doing. You stockpile these picks. You can either use them for picks, obviously. Well, you stockpile the picks if you know what to do with them. Right. Well, yeah, you can either – you can obviously uh, get draft picks for them or you can trade them and move up in the draft if you like a quarterback. As far as Eli's concerned, Mike, you know as well as I do, Eli does not want to go anywhere. Like you said yesterday, him and his family fought to be on this team. Eli, if you heard his voice, he's proud to be a New York Giant. I don't care if this team goes 1-15. and 15. He does not want to go anywhere. But I don't know that. I, I don't know if that's true now. I, I don't know yeah. that he wouldn't accept it. I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't say that that's true. I really I, Mike, I, I, Mike, I, I, I don't know that that's true. I really don't. But, Mike, they're not going to send Eli in the middle of the night packing on a, on a flight to Jacksonville. They're not going to do that. They're going to wait for the offseason. What are you going to do? That, that, they're going to bench him this year. They're going to bench him this year, you know. You think he wants to sit here and get benched? If he wants to. I don't think if he uh, – I don't Wait, know. No, no, no. They're, they're not going to ask like him. This, they're not going to ask him this time if they're going to bench him. They're just going to bench him. They're going to they're gonna put – listen, I could guarantee you one thing this year. Sometime in this season, Lillette is going to get the play. They're going to take a look at him. They're not going to not do that. I'm telling you right now, they, they are not going to not look at him this year. They're going to look at him at some point. But because Mike, they, when, they, when the season's over, they're gonna they're, they're gonna make Eli sit a couple of days on the bench. I mean, and play Lilletta just to see what he looks like. They're gonna right, do that because it, it makes sense to do that because they're but gonna no, move I, on after this year, but most likely from Eli. I mean, I, I think that's gonna happen. Now, I don't know what Eli's future is gonna be after this year. I have no idea. Maybe he'll Mike, retire. Please. Maybe he won't retire. Maybe he'll go to another team. I don't know what his future is, to be honest with you. But Mike, but, I, I, but I, I think the I Giants think are moving on after this year. No, I definitely think so, too. I think when the dust clears and he talks to his family and he talks to Peyton. Well, Peyton but we don't know things. that yet. We'll have to let that play out. We'll see. But I don't Peyton, know the answer to that. But Peyton can tell him, listen, it's not the end of the world to go with another team. I did it, and I won a Super Bowl. Well, I, well you just said two minutes ago he wouldn't go to another team. I, you just no, said you were just arguing year, that he wouldn't. I, I, I don't know that he won't do that. I would think he would. I would. I would think that would be the best thing that could happen to him right now. Listen, when he gets away... The day the clock stops running on his giant career, his giant career will get better the day he stops, the clock stops running. The day this stuff that is going on right now and the whole career is looked at in, in, in its entirety, it gets better by the minute because he had a tremendous career here. He had a bad couple of late years. He had a wonderful career. He, had, he didn't have a losing season his first eight. He won two Super Bowl MVPs. He had many seasons where he had very good years offensively. You know, 35 touchdown passes, 4,000 yards passing. I mean, he had years like that. He's in the top 10 in both categories lifetime. So, the, you know, he's got a winning record, which was a lot better a couple of years ago than it is now. I mean, you know, it was 20 games over 500. Now it's, you know, four or three. Regular season. So, I mean, these last couple of years have, have hurt him. But it's like a very good player or a great player who late in his career has a couple of bad seasons where things don't go well. And remember, when quarterbacks lose, when their teams lose, quarterbacks, it's very hard to say a quarterback had a great season when his team doesn't win any games because winning is what quarterbacks are still about. That's what it's about. Even sometimes when it's not their fault. Sometimes it can be their fault. Sometimes it's not their fault. You know, there are games this year where Eli was part of the blame, and there were games this year where he should have been part of the reason they won, like the Carolina game. He didn't do anything wrong. Did everything right and still lost the game. Chris in Little Falls. What's up, Chris? Hey, Mike. Um, how are you? Good. Just, uh, pretty sadly, I am a, a disgruntled Raider fan who... At this point, I don't mind that they traded Cooper. I'm shocked we got a number one for him. Yeah, I hope so we trade Carr at this point. But my problem is that we've been in perpetual rebuild mode since 2003, and with the exception of 2016 where we went 12-4, and four, we're now going back to another rebuild. And you're talking three to five years that they're going to have to go through this. And I don't trust them enough with all these picks that they have to make the right picks, to be completely honest. Well, I mean, listen, so, this is you know, Gruden's dance now. This is, know. A, you know, this is nobody else's de- t- This is now Gruden's whole show. Yeah. And if he, wants to, if he wants to move Carr out, which it sounds like he does, yeah. 
It sound, it does sound like because yeah. I know he complained about how much money they paid Carr. His big yeah. issue wasn't Carr's play. His big issue was Carr's contract. But Carr's play has not been good. No, either. it hasn't. And he's and, been injured a lot. You know, yeah. since, since he has not been the same since the leg injury. He has not no. been the same. Yeah. Uh, I, yes. Listen, I think there's a chance he goes to the Giants. I think there's a chance he could go to Jacksonville. And I don't the think the so. Giants. I don't think the Giants are going to take their quarterback that way. I, I'd be surprised. Yeah. Only because I don't know if they think he's good, damaged goods or not physically. I, I think they're going to look to pick their own guy. You know, there's, there's, you know, I. I Looking at it, and I had this conversation with someone last night, and I said, we know there's going to be more names surfacing at quarterback. Alabama quarterback aside, how many guys are we looking at? And four names were presented, led by the Oregon guy, but also the Duke quarterback, the West Virginia quarterback and the Missouri quarterback were all mentioned as guys who will most likely be first-round picks or very close to first-round picks. So that already takes you up to four this year. And the hot guy of late is the Duke quarterback. Other than, of course, the Oregon quarterback who, you know, everyone likes the six fix, he's 230, you know, and uh, he's become the flavor of the month. But uh, the Duke quarterback is getting a lot of looks now. Uh, the games I saw the West Virginia quarterback play, I was not impressed. I did not like him. Um, the games I saw him play this year. I watched him play two games on, on purpose this year, and I was not impressed. But uh, the Duke guys come up, and the Missouri guy is another guy they said is borderline. Uh, could be a uh, and the NC State guy they say is a bit of a sleeper who could go as high as the second round or third round as a quarterback. Jerry and Rye, what's up, Jerry? Well, I'll tell you that I know one thing. John Mar is not very happy to look on his face the last. Why would he be? be very... They're four and nineteen. They're an embarrassment. Why would he be happy? I know, but I'll tell you, it's not the era of well, the fifteen years of lousy football that I went through. In the late, well, it's, you know what? It's pretty lousy, though. I, it's just, I, I know, but you know, here, here's what I want to say: There's only one football. They drafted a running back number one. This kid Barkley is terrific. I still think the giant problem is number thirteen. Now we can get into a debate. I think about the bigger, I think, I think the bigger think. problem is the line. Well, I think I, even I, big, I, even I, bigger I, than thirteen, I, the problem is the line. <laughs> Well, but the line is the problem, but there's only one football. That's okay. okay. You only need one football. You only, you only need, you only need one football. Right. And who's the most important player on the offense? It's usually the center. No, it's the, the quarterback. quarterback. No, it's the, not the center. It's, the, it's not the center. It's not the center. It's the quarterback. Why would it be the center? It's not the center. It's the quarterback. Obviously, it's the quarterback. But the idea that you can't have a guy play well together, they have a lot of trouble playing with one ball in Kansas City. They have wonderful running back, wonderful tight end, and an electric receiver. They having trouble playing together? I don't think so. They have trouble playing with the Rams. They have a lot of trouble playing there. The quarterback, the running back, they having trouble playing? I don't think so. It's the offensive line. Listen, I'm not a Beckham guy. We know that. All right. There's a lot of things about Beckham I don't like, but I'm not going to pin all this on him either. It's not all on him. This team has allowed its infrastructure to completely destroy any chance they had. They pinpointed it for three years and didn't fix it. More than anything, now, that can be partially a coaching thing, but first and foremost, it has been a personnel thing. They have not, and this goes from Reese, and it goes through this hierarchy, they have not fixed their enormous problem on the offensive line. The question is why? Why has it been such a problem? I got deal coming on today to discuss it because there's the problem. They don't have David Deals who, you know what they say to him, oh, you're tough and you're playing really well here, but I need you here. And when they did that and they put him somewhere, he did the job. And he more than did the job. And that's why, that's why guys like that 
or worth their weight in gold. Soybert, guys like that, or tough guys like Snee or Hara. Go name, go down the line, or go back to. I'm not even going back to the '80s where the suburbanites did a great job blocking for Morris and later for Anderson and guys, you know, guys who were, you know, not just the guys who were drafted highly there, but the guys who also came out of nowhere there like Cratch and did a great job. That's what you need to have those kind of guys, those lunch pail guys on your offensive line. The Giants don't have any of that now. Back after this. <laughs> 